about how this partnership of um, brothers-in-laws came out as far as being a business relationship? Um, just something my dad had actually suggested to me trying. He wants me to learn all aspects. He wanted me to learn how the reading condition book and how to be a socialized person and learn to talk to people. So he figured the best way to do it was being Chris's agent and happened at the time. Chris's last agent and him had just parted ways mutually and he needed someone to do it. So I asked him about it. So who who did uh, Ian bring it up to first? Brody you or Chris you? Who? I, he brought it up to me. And you said? I just asked, just suggested it to him. We, you know, we went out there one night and we just talked about it and, you know, what he's looking for, you know, uh, if I was serious or not, not just something to do uh, for a short while and then see you later, you know, we wanted someone that was going to be there for a while. Because you kind of had your heart set on training, hadn't you? Or I do, and I still do. It's something I still want to do down the road. This is just something kind of in between. My dad says he's got another 10, 15 years training. Chris says he can ride for another 10, 15 years, so it kind of works out. If it works all out together, it just kind of falls into place. Then I'll work for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think, Chris, when Brody brought up this idea? Um, I was actually a little hesitant at first just because, you know, family. Um, you don't want to mix the two, but then again, I ride for Ian, who's my father-in-law. So, but Ian and I have a really good work relationship where we can separate the two, business and family time, and we've never had any issues at all. So, when Brody approached it, I was a little hesitant, but after talking with my wife and thinking about it, and the good thing about Brody and I is we're really good friends. You know, we're not only family, but we're good friends. So, you know, he puts me in my place when I need it, and I help him along the way when he needs it, and. We got a good relationship as far as work goes and a friendship on the side. So, you know, we're kind of growing together, you know, and it's uh, it's been fun. Brody, I mean, you can be um, completely candid with Chris because of your your friendship. Is the friendship thicker than the, you know, your, your blood and your I, friends? Oh, yeah. I mean, we were friends first before he became officially family. So, you know, I've known him for a lot, while now and... You know, may butt heads on things, but we're quick to get over and move on. It's, you know, two minutes, forget about it, you know. It works work, family's family, it's, it all stays separate. Yeah, I spend more time with him than my wife, so you know how that can go, you know, so, yeah. How's it different, Chris, having Brody as your agent versus other agents that you've had in the past? Um, well, I mean, I don't treat it any differently because Brody's just as good as far as horsemanship and knowing horses. Um, you know, like I said, I think he's, it's just finding, like, learning the condition book a little bit and charting. And um, But I think that the sky's the limit for him because in just a short amount of time, he's really improved. And it, the good thing about Brody is he gets along with everyone. So you can't go wrong with people like you. They always leave the door open. So, you know, that that's a big plus. You said the other day that one thing about him is Brody's very loyal and very honest and that if he gives his word, you know, he's not going to spin somebody. That makes it awful difficult at times to be an agent, doesn't it? It can, but, you know, a lot of people appreciate, you know, loyalty. You know, you spend someone, it's hard. You know, they may not want to use you again. You know, they're going to hold it against Some people will hold it against you. You know, and, and you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. Yeah, maybe you miss out on the better horse, but down, it helps you down the road building business. And you all been doing well together. Yeah. Whose idea was it to stay home at Turfway for the winter? It was mine. This one. Mm -hmm. One, I didn't really want to go anywhere. I was happy to stay home. But no, uh, I just thought in terms of building Kentucky business, Turfway was the logical answer. I know he loves Florida and loves being there. He's competitive. You're riding against the best jockeys in the country over the winter there. But it's just not a lot of Kentucky guys there to try to build your spring up. And it just seems Turfway's right now is just the way, way to go. I didn't have the best of year last year and not only because of COVID but with you know my own my own business and I needed to take a step back and rebuild and that was the whole point of going to Turfway. Brody thought it was a good opportunity to kind of rebuild and connect with some of the guys that I can ride for all year and it worked out good and we started the meet off well and we we didn't want to ride every race but we rode the right kind of races and we made the most of it and this year has been very promising and got into some outfits that uh, last year I couldn't get in and um, 
you know, we're just crossing our fingers, we can keep it going. Would three examples of that be Wesley Ward, Rudolph Brissett, and Chad Brown? Mark Cassie. Mark, Mark Cassie? Mark Cassie and Mark, even, uh, Mark's a big, big portion of my business. And, I mean, even you know, Turfway Jonathan Thomas was huge for us. Yeah. I mean, I think we won eight of our first nine rides for him, which on really odd to win that many races for someone in a row. Rudolph's been a very big push for my business and I have a great work relationship with him and you know, I got nothing but good things to say about him and his, his horseman. The money's not that great yet at, at Turfway. There's a promise of things to come, but it was an investment in the future that's paying off yeah, now. Yeah, that's, that's something Brody kept trying to put in my head. You know, listen, the money's not gonna be what you're used to, but at the same time, just try to focus on what the next step in the future is going to be like and um, that's what I kept I had to dig deep and just kind of keep going not worry too much about you know the money but because it'll pay off later in the year you'll make your money so. is it easier to uh, take a suggestion from like you know that's fundamentally you know you're a young guy you're ambitious you know you're wanting to be like you said with the top writers and stuff to take that step back is it easier when the guy making the suggestion is a close friend like that versus um, somebody that it's strictly a business relationship with? Yeah, because Brody truly wants the best for me. And he sees the writing on the wall where sometimes you get tunnel vision in your own thoughts and in your own mind. Well, he sees another side and an avenue that can better for me later on in the year. And then you also get some guys that want to be your agent just for the time being and they just see dollar signs for that meet. Brody just, it wasn't so much about the dollar signs at the moment. It was more building up for the future and let the rest fall into place. Did you have any question but that he would be a top agent? Um, it wasn't, it was more of if he, he would really like it or not because I knew how quiet he was and so conservative. And like you said, to be a really, really top agent, you have to be pretty aggressive and kind of cutthroat at times. And Brody can be, I wouldn't say cutthroat, but he can be aggressive in his own way. And everyone's different. So I think he's now adapting to both sides of it. And um, it wasn't so much that I didn't think he could be a top agent. It was more of if he's going to enjoy it as much as he enjoys being an assistant trainer or taking the training avenue. Yeah, a year ago, Brody, you were coming here and saddling horses for your dad. <laughs> now, yeah. Are you enjoying it? Well, I do enjoy it. I mean, I do, I do miss the saddling part because I actually love the Ellis Park meet. So not to have a barn and be a part of like my own set of horses is I miss that. But I enjoy it. I'm enjoying it so far and you know I'm, I'm lucky I have people like Frank Bernice who's an agent for Brian and James who he helps me out a lot you know and Corey Pruitt helps me these these there's a lot of agents who are very helpful to give advice and you know which is good they're not they're not all trying to hoard the business they, they want to help you like they push you along and just make sure you know what you're doing and doing it right Chris you said the other day that one thing Brody's been teaching you is patience if you could you elaborate on yeah, that. Yeah, I have none whatsoever. My wife will tell you that. Brody will tell you that. Um, I have all the patience in the world on a horse, but off a horse, I have no patience for anything. So I'm learning. It's a. Uh, I'm adjusting. I'm <laughs> growing up. <laughs> how does how does he teach you that? How do you teach him that, Brody? How do you teach him patience? It's just one of those things. Like he's he's so aggressive and wants things to happen now, now, now. And like I understand, he he wants to win. He wants things to happen, but. You know, like I, I look at a different perspective. Like it, we're trying to build business that's going to take time, but it's not going to, we win one race today and next thing we're getting all the calls from everyone. It's just something that slowly comes and and he sees it. And he, I think, you know, our, our business, the way what we're riding, who we ride for, it shows that we're getting the opportunities as you know, and he makes the most of what he's getting. You say, you know, family's family and business is business. How do you keep it separate? It's, um, well, when we're here, or when we got the draw and we talk, it's business. But when he comes to the house or we're at the house, it's it's family. Like we're not worried about talking about business or yeah. what's going on. We may discuss a race that happened that day, but after that, it's you know not really worried about it. You know, it's just it kind of comes natural. Yeah. To be honest with you, I never really even think about separating the two. It just comes natural. Maybe because I rode for Ian for six years prior to Brody being my agent. I don't know. We just are very good about it. I don't know. And you said the family gets together usually on Sundays, is it? That really, anyway. we, get, we get together a lot, you know, with the two, my two little boys, you know, they want to see Bro Bro and, and Poppy and, you know, Nene, of course. So, you know, we, we get together as much as possible. 
but it's hard you know we're all kind of scattered everywhere right now but yeah i'd say a few times a week we all get together yeah and and the, a big selling point of that too is that brody's a great cook right <laughs> yeah he can cook yeah he cooked some pasta which is not good for me but it's good to, you know. <laughs> well yeah if he had his way i'd be cooking cooking it every night for him yeah. but yeah, like you said, it's not good for him every night. No, no. <laughs> are y'all satisfied with the way things are going now? Would you is that the right word to use, or I, or is there still okay? This is it's a stepping stone, or it's it's a stepping stone. We can never. I can always do better. Yeah, always, and I think there's a lot of room for some improvement, and and I think we're gonna get there. Just like a, like you said, just be a little patient, but. I'm happy with the way things are going, but uh, um, I won't get satisfied until I'm there. So. Well, let's talk about Shelby. You each have a different perspective. One is married to her, and one is her sibling. Then you were telling a story about as being kids and uh, punching her in the nose, and you couldn't even remember why, but you got away with it, and Shelby got blamed for it? Yeah, I don't remember why. I just I think I just realized it's probably my one shot to get in, because I'd probably never get another he's opportunity. The, he's the favorite child, that's why. <laughs> yeah, favorite child, so I... So, so how does that work? And I, I want to talk to Shelby too, but how does that work having her had this relationship with both of you? She likes it because now she has Chris's agent's phone number. <laughs> so it's the first time she's had that. So now she can put her two cents in on what's going on. And does she? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. She, she's got an opinion. She'll tell you. And Chris, from your perspective. I listen to what I want to hear most of the time. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, it's good she wants to be a part of it you know but at the end of the day it's Brody and I's decisions on what we need to do and we're gonna do what we need to do regardless of outside noise so you know but it's nice to show that she cares and you know as well as you know his mom and dad as well they they all support us and you know I think it's very rewarding for Ian as well to see us be successful at the end of the day because if we're not riding for him we want to see him win too